Hello, my name is Joseph and I'm recording this in the southeastern United States. Today I want to show you a new selection tool that we haven't covered before and that's called the foreground selection tool. You can see it right here. And you can see when I get into the drawing down here it's going to be instructions on how to use this tool. So the first thing we'll do is draw a rough circle around the object that we're interested in next thing we're going to do is mark the foreground by painting in it and I'm going to try to paint just about every shade of this white flower as soon as I release the mouse button you can see it begin to calculate and there we go we have a real quick selection now I'm going to hold the control key down and use the middle mouse button to zoom in you also notice that when I hold the control key down that my cursor shows an eraser. So I'm going to let up on it, hold it down, see? Now what I can do here is erase portions that I'm not interested in. And as soon as I release the mouse button again, it will begin calculating once again. and hopefully remove those sections and any others with that same color from our selection and we've got a little bit here still and there's a little bit more here so we must not have removed anything with that color now all I have to do is press the enter key and we have a selection of that whole foreground piece and then from there you can do with it whatever you want to and there you have a rough introduction to the foreground selection tool so let's go in a little more detail with this tool and to begin with let's talk about how it works now the foreground selection tool uses a special algorithm that's called the SEOX algorithm and you can find out information about it on SEOX.org. There it also tells you what types of in images work well in the facts section here. There's algorithm details and they've also used this algorithm in more than just the GIMP. It's also in Inkscape and other things. So you can see other demo videos of how it works but let's go over the GIMP implementation of it a little bit more I've got this picture here which isn't a great picture for this algorithm because some of the colors in the picture are so closely related that they're not going to do well but it does make a good picture for showing one of the uh, features of the algorithm and if you notice in the other selections we have a lot of the same options available in the foreground selection tool we can change the mode we can feather the edges we can also change the radius of that feathering then we have this option for contiguous regions the select contiguous area when selected will only view the face that you're interested in so let's do a demo of that let's select the whole area with all three of the faces and then we'll make a selection on this face and with the contiguous selected we should only have this area selected So 
So now let's hit escape and we'll try it again with contiguous unselected. We'll select the same face. And now you can see that the algorithm has picked every similar face tone in our selection. There's also a few other options that you can change. And I believe we'll get another picture to show that because this is a better picture. You can see that we can, uh, we can change marking of the foreground and marking of the background by holding the control key. Or you can do it here if you don't want to hold the control key. You can also vary the brush size. And there's an option for smoothing here, which I don't have a good handle on. Um, I, th I think what it, you really need to do there is experiment with this, especially if you have an image that isn't working well with the algorithm. There's also the uh, view color. We can change that to a different color. Let's try drawing our selection here now. And as far as the uh, default color, right now I have black selected. So we can choose a different uh, foreground color here. There's also the color sensitivity, which is another option that I haven't used a lot. Uh, when I did, it seemed to just uh, mess things up. So again, there's more room for experimenting here. But let's go ahead and zoom in here and do a little bit more selecting. We'll see how well this algorithm works for this picture. And as you can see, this picture works really well. And one thing you can do is refine this further, or in some cases when it doesn't do quite so well, you can use the selection that it's got, and you can go into the quick mask and go in here and begin to refine it yourself. and that was a bad example but you can see how this can easily be used to give you a real quick rough selection and then you can refine it quickly and you can tell that, that it's done a, a decent job of giving you a good feathered selection there and with that I think we're done showing you the foreground selection tool. Thank you for watching.